Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to talk about building scalable chat history and conversational memory into your large language applications using Azure Cosmos DB. I'm James Cadell, a product manager in Azure Cosmos DB, and I'm joined today by Jasmine Greenway, a senior cloud advocate. So let's have a quick recap on Cosmos DB, right? It's a set of highly scalable and AI ready databases. We have our core Cosmos DB for NoSQL offering that offers a serverless or provision throughput model, has high elasticity with instant auto scale, low latency with real-time data transactions, oftentimes guaranteed under 10 millisecond point reads and point writes for the same region, with mission critical world-class reliability of five nines. It also features built-in vector indexing and search using a new suite of state-of-the-art algorithms for Microsoft Research called DiskANN, which we'll talk about more in a little bit. We also have our Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB offering. This is a MongoDB compatible API and that offers uh, provision compute and storage in a vCore or uh, uh, a dedicated compute structure. You're able to store your data and your vectors together in any of the Cosmos DB instances in order to keep your data consistent. Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB also has high reliability and built-in vector indexing and search featuring the IVF and HNSW algorithms. So at Build this year, we announced several exciting things for Azure Cosmos DB for NoSQL. First is native vector indexing and search. This is vector indexing and search built into the core Cosmos DB for NoSQL engine. This is not a, a plugin. This is not something that sits on top of the database, but it's built into the core database structure itself. And this is available in preview. We also announced disk ANN index early preview. And again, this, we're really excited about this. This will offer a vector search and indexing at tremendous scale in Azure Cosmos DB. We also have integrations with your favorite large language model orchestrators like Semantic Kernel and Langchain. Let's talk about some of the uh, scenarios for generative AI uses for Cosmos DB. First, we have a vector and operational database in one, right? Storing your vector data and your metadata or other document data together in one collection, in one document. Right, so this removes the need to ETL or transform your data and shift it to a dedicated vector database. You can have one source of truth for your ground data and for your uh, vector data as well. So you're able to remain consistent. This also reduces complexity and costs for your generative AI applications. Built on top of the operational database with vector search, we have retrieval augmented generation, right? So it's finding the most relevant data in your database and bringing it out to ground your large language model and personalize it for your scenario. And you can do this with Cosmos DB uh, vector search today. This is a uh, cheaper, more cost effective than fine tuning and allows you to quickly iterate on your new data. Perfect for generative AI applications. Also, Cosmos DB is widely used for chat history, right? So maintaining conversational context in your chatbot or your large language model. You want to you want it to have memory of what you talked about in the previous session or previous day or previous month. Uh, you can also uh, analyze the chat history later on for uh, improving your uh, user experience or um, optimizing your large language model, or your chatbot. You might also want to use it for auditing, right? Um, whenever you have an AI model uh, interacting with uh, humans in a real scenario, uh, it's always good to keep a record of those interactions and what's happening so you can uh, assure that the uh, model is performing as you would expect, right? So this is really a must have for chat sessions uh, and also allows you to do some iterative improvement for cost and performance. Now, combining vector search and chat history together, you have the concept of semantic caching. So this is basically, instead of every time there's a new user question or user prompt, you have to go and make a ping to your large language model API. Instead, if I'm caching or if I'm saving those uh, large language model responses in my database, I can actually refer to those uh, using a vector search. And then this saves me from having to make a call to my large language model API. Right? So if I've seen this question from a user before, instead of pinging the large language model, I can simply execute a vector search on the database and bring a large language model response that I've seen previously. This can drastically reduce the cost of my generative AI applications and saves latency as well. So lots of great use cases that we're seeing for Cosmos DB today. Thousands of customers are already doing this today. 
So at Build, we were really excited to announce Vector Search and Azure Cosmos DB for NoSQL, which empowers customers to uh, realize these scenarios that we just talked about. So we're able to store our data and our vectors together to reduce complexity, cost, and the sophistication of our generative AI uh, uh, architectures. Um, we can store transactional and operational data together with our vectors, uh, and we're able to execute vector search with all of the Cosmos DB query filters, right? So all of the rich Cosmos DB uh, where clauses, all the filters, the spatial indices, everything that you know and love about Cosmos DB for NoSQL uh, query, you can actually use in conjunction with vector search today. So that's really exciting. Uh, we're also allowing you to uh, choose a sort of flexible indexing path, right? So you could have a flat or exact search, a quantized flat or compressed exact search, and then the new disk in an index, which I'll talk a little bit more about that we're really excited about. And this is all built on top of the core Cosmos DB for NoSQL capabilities, where you can choose serverless or provision throughput model, and you can actually migrate from serverless to provision throughput uh, when you need to. Uh, it's built in multi-tenancy options, right? So several different options for different tenancy isolation, all the way from partition key, hierarchical partition key, container and database isolation, and even resource isolation. So lots of great uh, stuff for multi-tenant apps there. We also feature an instant and dynamic auto scale, which is pretty unique in the industry. You know, instant scaling out for when your traffic starts uh, increasing, but we also scale back inward very efficiently to save you cost uh, when your traffic subsides. As I mentioned before, we have uh, under 10 millisecond uh, point reads in the same region guarantee. Uh, your data can be globally replicated and industry leading five names. SLA. So all this core capabilities of Cosmos DB that make Cosmos DB the most powerful distributed database in the world, you get this uh, with your vector search scenarios. Now let's talk a little bit more about the disk ANN based index. So disk ANN, as I mentioned, is a suite of highly scalable algorithms that was developed at Microsoft Research for vector indexing and search. Disk ANN is already used widely inside Microsoft, powering semantic search across the most widely used applications from Microsoft 365 and Bing. Uh, we have scenarios that have indexes for up to 400 billion vectors of trillions of points and able to do this at high accuracy and very low latency. And we're really excited to announce that we're bringing this to you and we've announced this in preview uh, at build uh, in 2024. So really excited to bring that to you for powering your applications. So let's dig into a little bit on how disk ANN works. So it starts off with um, you have your vectors and your vectors uh, get compressed through a method called quantization. We use product quantization here. And the quantized or compressed vectors are stored in memory to be really efficient. The full fidelity or uncompressed vectors are then uh, used to create a graph structure that's then stored on high-speed SSDs, which are the backbone of storage for Azure Cosmos DB. So this combination of compressed vectors in memory and full fidelity vectors in a graph on SSD allows to do really uh, efficient vector search at tremendous scale, taking advantage of Cosmos DB scale out architecture. And we're able to do this um, uh, using uh, suite, this suite of algorithms that comprises of disk ANN, where it builds this fully connected graph and then has a robust pruning method to ensure that the connections between the vectors are optimal for search, so the search converges, ver converges very quickly. And again, this is all built on top of the goodness of Cosmos DB for unlimited scale, low latency, and serverless. Disk ANN is also robust to data changes, so you don't have to worry about triggering a full index rebuild if you have lots of insertions, deletions, or modification operations like you would with another vector index like HNSW. And we can even see this uh, in examples from uh, some of the papers that were published on Disk ANN, and we have a, a, a citation here at the bottom. But you can see that uh, through various cycles of insertions, deletions, and modifications, we can see that HNSW uh, actually retains high recall over these insertion and deletion operations without having to trigger a full index rebuild. Right? Full index rebuilds can be computationally expensive. Uh, they can lead to downtime unless you have redundancy. Uh, we can see that compared to other algorithms that 
uh, Vimana or uh, the core uh, indexing algorithm behind DiscANN is actually quite robust uh, to these um, to these changes of the data. So this is really great uh, in use cases if you uh, experience uh, a lot of uh, insertions or modifications to your data. So so DiscANN really performs. Uh, well in multitude of scenarios. If your data is really stable and you're not making a lot of changes, DiscANN performs very well. But if you have a lot of uh, dynamics in your data as well, DiscANN can still remain incredibly robust and accurate uh, as your data changes. Over the next six months, we're gonna also launch a, a suite of exciting features to complement our vector search capabilities in Cosmos DB. Uh, first, we're gonna look at performance improvements and optimizations that we're making to make vector search even faster, so lower latency, higher throughput, and even reduced RU cost for vector search. Next, we're looking at releasing full text search in public preview later this year. So this is going to be uh, uh, efficient uh, text search that leverages a full text index, along with a text ranking such as uh, BM25. And we're really excited to actually also bring later this year a public preview of hybrid search. So this is the BM25 text ranking in combination with vector uh, similarity search. So the combination of these two allow you to get incredibly relevant, incredibly accurate results from your information retrieval uh, of your documents stored in Cosmos DB to bring them to your AI apps. So uh, that about wraps up um, um, what we have for, uh, for slides and announcements. I'd like to hand it off to my colleague, Jasmine, who can walk us through an exciting demo of seeing Cosmos DB uh, in action in a generative AI app. Jasmine? Yes, thanks, James. So before we hop into the code, let's take a look at a little diagram. Let's see what we're going to be building today. So what we have is a generative AI chat application. You know, one of the first things you'll notice that it looks quite similar to your typical chat UI. It's actually built in Blazor. Here we're using C Sharp to build it. So um, we'll be working with two containers in Azure Cosmos DB. First, we'll have our chat history container that will store our users' chat history um, per session, as well as a cache container. And this is where we will store um, historical, historical uh, conversation or his historical prompts from the user um, so that we can save a little bit of time and money from going back to our LLMs um, and checking the by checking the cache first before we go on to our completion model. Each time we'll, all, we'll always go to our embedding model to turn the user prompt into, uh, our, in, in, into an embedding and then uh, we'll store that in the cache. And then um, if it's not in it, if that prompt happens to not be in the cache, then we will go on to the completion model. So let's go ahead and take a look at the application first. And so here I am in the chat application here. Um, and what we're looking at here in the browser, we can see on the left side, I have some chat history already. Um, we can see that it is stored in sessions is actually stored in Cosmos DB. And I've actually already uh, powered up a new chat session. So my previous conversation was around bagels, sweet bagels. Um, James and I are from the north, the northeast, so we are bagel folks over here. So uh, I had a question about sweet bagels, and now I'm going to go ahead and ask a question about savory, savory bagels. So I'm going to go in ahead and say recommend five savory bagel combinations, and let's see what we get. And here we go. So we got our five recommendations here. Now, um, let's say that I, uh, the, I, you know, I forgot that I even asked this question. Maybe that I, you know, maybe the conversation went on and on and on, and I asked the same question again. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is copy this. Oops, excuse me. Copy this, and we'll paste this right here. And what we should see is an instantaneous reply with our saved, our saved completion that we had earlier. We can see if I scroll up here, it's the same exact uh, response. And the reason why this was so fast is this is actually us checking the cache first before we go on to completion. So in this case, we actually didn't even go to our completion model. We actually just went to, we just went and found the same prompt in, in, uh, in our cache. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like in our code. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and debug this application here in Visual Studio. 
And one of the first things we'll do is it'll go ahead and load our application. Um, and here we go ahead and create our cache container. One of the first things that I want to show you here is how we essentially set up our uh, vector um, embedding policy as well as our index policy. Um, you can see the path here as well. And then we can also see that our index type is disk ANN, as James was mentioning earlier. So we're going to go ahead and hit continue and go ahead and load our application. So here's our same application here. And one of the first things I want to just show you is just uh, is I'm going to go ahead and just make another, uh, ask another question here. So recommend three more combinations. And what will happen is that first thing that we insert that message into our chat history. Um, this is our uh, our chat. This is this is going to be stored in our chat complaint uh, container. And then we move on to uh, use the semantic kernel service to create embedding for this uh, this prompt. So I'm going to go ahead and um, one of the things that we do first is we, we turn that prompt into embedding and then we go and look for that prompt in in our uh, in our cache container. So here is the query here that we go ahead and use. So first we uh, we have we select our we select the top top res or re top result from our search uh, where similar similarity score is the highest. So we order from highest similarity score to lowest, and our similarity score is something that we can actually define ourselves. Here we have it to 0.99, but you can of course change this if this if it's uh, if you need something a little bit um, uh, dif uh, different in terms of accuracy. So we want the top we want the top result. We want the most we want the most accurate result here. So let's go ahead on. We know that in our chat history, this is a uh, a prompt that we have not asked before in this particular session. So my cache response should actually be empty, and we can see that it's empty here. So because of that, we're actually going to go ahead and go ahead and create a uh, go to completion model. This is what we're doing right here in our function here. And we're going to go ahead and store that in our chat history and store that in the cache. And this is our last step. We put that history into the cache and we should see our response here. Great. Now, what if I go ahead and ask that same question again here? Five, let's go ahead and make, uh, re recommend five savory bagel combinations. And let's go ahead and paste that right in here. And I'm gonna press enter. And again, we insert that history into our, into our, our our collection and then we go ahead and we turn our prompt into an embedding even though it might may or may not be in our in our cash in our cash collection and then we go ahead once again and query and what we should see here is that our response should be here and we can see that it is it it did not find it but let's go ahead and try this one more time We'll go ahead and paste this in and, and, and then we'll put that in the cache. Let's go ahead and try this one more time. And let's go ahead and go through our code and let's see what we get here. And there we go. So there is our cache response. Um, and so that means that we actually went to our cache first to double check and see what we have in there before we went on to completion model. And this what, and what this essentially means is that we are done. We are actually, we're, we're able to find our, this past prompt in with uh, in Cosmos DB and we're able to give the user uh, the, same, uh, the same response to a question or prompt that they provided earlier. And with the power of Cosmos DB, we were able to do this quick, super quick and fast. Um, so uh, that's it for the demo. Very cool. That's a great example of using Cosmos DB um, for doing some really cool stuff in your application. Uh, thanks, Jasmine. Like that's that's awesome. So uh, that pretty much wraps up uh, what we're going to talk about here today. Uh, we have some links and resources uh, to get you started. Uh, you can check out all our vector search announcements for Cosmos DB at the top, aka MS link. And we have a great getting started and sample page that you can check out. We have a solution accelerator that um, uh, walks through exactly the same demo um, uh, in a bit more uh, complex 
uh, a scenario than what uh, Jasmine had shown here. So more complete solution accelerator. And then all the way at the bottom, if you want to start with this, the simple example that Jasmine had shown, uh, you can just click the link below and it'll take you right to the GitHub repository. So thanks. Thanks.